So today we're diving into a review of the 2018 Harley Davidson Lowrider. Let's take a closer look at what makes the Lowrider stand out and how it compares to other models in the Harley Davidson stable of bikes. And we'll even see how it measures up against Alchemy, our 2014 Road King, on today's Greybeard Biker. <laughs> Hello everyone, today we're reviewing a bike that I rented to go to the Biker Nation Reunion Rally in Helen recently. The episode about that rally is going to be right here. But today we're talking about the 2018 Harley-Davidson Lowrider. It's an iconic model that has been a favorite amongst Harley riders for decades. Thanks to its distinct styling, versatile performance, all the shit that's on the poop sheet. So let's start by looking at some of the key factory specifications straight from the mouths of Harley-Davidson. I was told you that we combine the best of Dyna performance and the soft heel style. Let's check out the exciting new look. It's lighter, it's quicker, it's more fun to ride, and it's exciting to look at. A low rider was a dance Harley. He was a badass in the seventies. We recaptured an attitude of the next generation with this all new low rider. Details like the tank console, the dual gauges, reshaped headlight visor, and a one piece seat that tapers over the rear fender. We have cast wheels and this really, really bitch in 70s throwback wrap. Now, the Lowrider is kind of a blank canvas in the soft kill line. It's a bike that is just begging to be customized. And that's why this model has a balance of chrome and black finishes, so it's easy to go with either a dark hunt or a brighter vision. Then mount controls are standard, and this new soft tone chassis action is really easy to convert the Lowrider forward controls for riders who want to stretch out means. And now this more riders for the way that they want to ride. So no question the low rider celebrates the throwback vibe, but some big speed cruiser riders have no time for nostalgia. Okay, that's a clip from the 2018 Harley Davidson dealership show where they launched the New Year's new line. And I agree with a lot of what they had to say. Yes, it is lighter. Yes, it is quicker. Yes, it is a throwback style to the 70s and before. I agree with all of that, but maybe it's a bit difficult to hear. It took me a lot of audio sweetening to get that as clear as it was. So let's look at a Harley commercial from back in 2017. One difference, however, I did change the music because I didn't want to have any copyright strikes, but otherwise it's the original spot from 2017. Now, just from those clips, I would say, look how big and stout it looks. But if you look closely into the commercial, that's a woman riding it. So here were my real world first impressions of the bike when I picked it up to rent.
So this is the bike that I rented. It is a 2018 Lowrider. Now I've never been on one of these before. It is a lot smaller than I expected. It is like a big sports street, if you will. But I think it looks pretty cool. And uh, we'll see how it rides. 107 cubic inch engine. So yeah, let's see what we do. At the heart of the 2018 Lowrider is the Milwaukee 8 107 engine. That's 1,746 cc engine, cubic centimeters. Whoever wrote these specs out obviously rides a foreign bike, cc's. It's 107 cubic inches of American-made muscle. The V-twin engine produces 110 foot-pounds of torque at 3,000 RPM. It's quick, it's strong, it's smooth, it's fun. The Milwaukee 8 engine is also known for having improved throttle response and reduced vibrations through something Harley is calling a counterbalanced design. Now, after picking it up, I rode it solo for quite some time. My wife was still at the office working, so by the time she was ready to go, I had a few more thoughts on how it rode. So I've had this bike for two and a half hours or so now, riding it by myself. Um, and there's a couple of things that are different about it, obviously, from mine. Uh, but I can't really say that it's different because of the model, or maybe it's different because of this particular bike. Um, things that I know are because of the model is it, it is a lot lighter than mine. <laughs> it's, it's like having a Sportster on steroids. Um, it is, it, it's very light um, and, and small. I mean, it's got a smaller tank. It, it's smaller in general. Um, so, uh, you know, that's interesting. The other thing is there's these foot pegs as opposed to floorboards. So that's different as well. Um, there's also not the, um, the kick pedal, which I'm used to on mine. I kick to go up here and down here. Well, here you can't. This is, it's kind of like I'm back in my, you know, motocross days when I was a kid and I'm having to, to you know, it's like a mini bike that I'm playing with. <laughs> but uh, it's very interesting as far as that goes. Um, one of the things that I will say that I don't think is the model's issue, uh, the handlebars are very stiff this way. Um, and I think that may, that's not the model, I think it's just the bike. Um, the other thing is that when you go to lean to turn, it feels like it's going to really pull itself over. And I think that's either because of the, the tightness up here, and that's what I'm feeling, or it's because this tire back here is worn. Because um, it's kind of worn at, at somewhat of an angle, so it may be that. So have to be very careful with it. That's the thing when you go from your bike to somebody else's bike, you start to appreciate your bike more. Um, but uh, yeah, it's interesting. It's um, this is kind of what when you look at all the old biker movies, this is the type of bike that they have. They don't have the you know the big touring bikes. Uh, they have this. So uh, I am now going to try it. Two up. We'll see how it goes. Now you hear me talk here a little bit about how it compares to my 2014 Road King. Now, the Road King is a classic touring bike. It's known for comfort, uh, long distance riding capabilities, having that stout look. 
but my 2014 model has a high output twin cam 103 engine that produces 104 foot pounds of torque. So it's not going to be as powerful or quick as the lowrider. But the Road King also comes with a larger frame, more storage capacity through those hard saddlebags. And it has some advanced touring features like cruise control and you know a, a large larger windscreen, that sort of thing. I think that the lowrider is more for agility and speed, whereas the Road King is for longer, more comfortable riding. Speaking of comfort, my wife was not impressed with this aspect at all. So tell me your thoughts on the bike we rented. Okay, um, it was different. It was the first time I'd ever ridden on a bike that didn't have saddlebags. So when we first saw it, I was like, oh, that's different. And obviously it's a lot lighter than Alchemy, um, which actually I was kind of excited about. I like the idea of being different, um, riding something new for a change. Um, it's a beautiful bike. There's nothing wrong with it aesthetically. I think it was it has awesome ape hangers and it looked really nice. We actually got a couple compliments on it at the uh, rally, which is kind of cool. It's weird to get a compliment on a bike that's not yours, but I was like, thank you. <laughs> <Not sure. laughs> um, the one thing that I noticed as a passenger was the back seat was very, very small. It's not very small. It was just smaller than what I'm used to. It was pretty average for a back seat, to be honest with you, probably a factory seat type of thing. But um, I have a much bigger back seat than, uh, than it had. And so I was like, oh wow, it's like riding a postage stamp. This will be fun. And sure enough, it was ridiculously, ridiculously uncomfortable for me. Um, on top of it being a pretty small back seat, uh, it did not appear as though there were any shock absorbers at all in play on that motorcycle. Um, I don't know, there could have been one underneath the actual driver's seat, the, you know, the, main, the main seat, but I was sitting on the fender. I was sitting on that back tire and I could tell you every groove, every bump, every imperfection in the street uh, from here to Helen and back. And it was extremely uncomfortable, very unpleasant. In fact, much to the chagrin of Greybeard, I did not want to go on the poker run that he had originally envisioned for us to go on because I knew I just could not handle riding on the bike all day. No way. It was all I could do to get up to hell and back. Oh, one of the cool things about the bike, it's a low rider. So it, it was really low to the ground, uh, which I could really care less about, except it was really neat because at, I'm on the back seat uh, as a passenger and I could still put my feet flat down on the ground which actually came in very handy being in so much pain at red lights, I could stand and relieve my derriere for a few minutes during a red light. Very cool. Um, also made getting on and off the bike a little easier when you can actually put your weight on the ground and not on the pegs. So um, that was pretty cool, uh, but would be even cooler if I didn't have to stand up at every red light to relieve my <laughs> painful backside. I was happy to ride a bike without saddlebags. It did, it did pose a little bit of an issue since Greybeard travels with a lot of gear, a lot of uh, camera gear and things, if you can imagine. I know women get blamed a lot for having all sorts of gear, but no, 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 no. Women don't have a lot of gear. Greybeard has all the gear and it was tricky trying to figure out how to carry all that gear. But um, yeah, I mean, it. it I, I, Overall, it was an interesting experience. I just did not find the bike to be comfortable to ride. The lowrider comes with a single two-up seat, mid-mounted foot controls. Now, this one in particular had been modified to have more forward-mounted controls, but you could see where they were uh, when it was stuck, um, which tells me that the owner is a taller person. I didn't meet him, but this tells me he's a taller person. It also, he had changed the uh, the bars to ape hangers, which is one of the reasons why I chose it, because apes are better, more comfortable for taller people. And yes, it has a single mono shock under the seat. But yeah, she didn't like it.
this bike still had its stock exhaust on it, which if you remember is one of the first things that I changed. Matter of fact, I changed the exhaust before I even brought it off the showroom floor. Um, this bike, you will notice, sounds a bit like a vacuum cleaner, like it has a, a supercharger or a, some sort of jet engine. It does not have the low, bulgy rumble that a Harley Davidson is supposed to, in my opinion. Again. Wah, wah. <laughs> now, while the lowrider has a classic appearance, it is packed with some modern technology. It features, you know, a signature Daymaker LED headlamp. It has keyless ignition. My Road King doesn't have that. It also has a hidden digital display that provides, you know, all of the essential writing information that you're going to need while still maintaining that vintage look, right? The hidden digital display integrates into the tank mounted gauges and you kind of go through them and they change screens. Your bike, if you have a modern bike, it probably does the same thing. But it gives you information, you know, like what gear you're in, what the odometer is, the, the trip uh, meter, right? The tripometer. It's there to keep you informed while still, you know, maintaining that lowrider aesthetic. So thanks for watching our latest motorcycle review. Bottom line, I thought it was a fun bike, but it felt more like a toy that I would enjoy playing with. Now, if you've ridden one, comment your thoughts below. And if you like motorcycle content, go ahead and hit the thumbs up so that YouTube knows to send you more motorcycle content. If you like Greybeard Biker videos, be sure to hit the subscribe, maybe hit the notification bell as well. Our next motorcycle review is going to be on the Indian Roadmaster. We're renting it when we go to Texas next month. If you want to check out the rental service that we use, we did a review of them as well. That video is right here. And don't forget that we go live every Thursday night at 8.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We'd love for you to stop by. And until then, stay free. Keep it shiny side up.